Does the end really justify the means? Many people throughout history has dealt with this problematic question. An Italian statesman in the Renaissance period has his own answer. Niccolo Machiavelli has seen and studied how people rise and fall from power. After experiencing disaster in his political career, he wrote a treatise to the head of the ruling family who trialed, tortured, and exiled him, hoping he can get on their good side and be reinstalled back to power. The Prince is a formal article addressed to the powerful Lorenzo de' Medici about how a leader or a prince must govern his state or principality to secure power. Before I continue, I just want to say that I don't endorse the following ideas to be tackled in this video, and I do not urge you guys to apply these into your own lives. The Prince is a controversial book that discusses cruelty and exploitation of other people to further one's own political interests. All jokes aside, I want everyone to know that the reason I am making this vid is so that we can all be aware of how manipulative and powerful people act in order to further their objectives. Knowing how the these people operate in this manner can give everyone the advantage of being alert and on the lookout so we could protect ourselves and not fall victim to such tactics. If everything's clear, on to the video. Nice guys finish last. We always hear this phrase, especially on the internet, but how does that really translate in governing or leading other people? Machiavelli argues that you can't always be nice. He used examples of good and righteous historical leaders who fell to betrayal, mutiny, and devastating failures despite their good intentions and fair treatment of others. Others. He explained that this is because those nice rulers committed great mistakes by being too soft and not demonstrating the capacity for ruthlessness during their rule. And apparently, there are people out there who think that being too good and non-violent makes a person harmless and weak. He wrote that people must either be won over or destroyed and that many virtuous things may lead to our doom. He also declared that cruelty is necessary for discipline and respect. Machiavelli leaned on the idea that sometimes, an extreme act such as a gruesome public execution is necessary to instill fear on the prince's subjects so they would think twice before doing something against him. But this must be done sparingly. Violence must be inflicted once and for all. People will then forget what it tastes like and so be less resentful. Benefits must be conferred gradually and in that way, they will taste better. Other types of cruelty and violence were suggested by him when it comes to holding new states or possessions. This included totally destroying the line of the former ruling prince or wiping out their entire royal family so they would not get the chance to exact revenge on him because there will be no one left to do so. He also recommended removing future threats by crushing individuals who have the potential to challenge their rule while they are still weak and have not yet gained power. The prince must also be suspicious and wary of independent and strong nobles because they have the power to oppose him and they are harder to control. He must not give them too much authority in court for that power may be used against him. Machiavelli advised Medici that whoever is responsible for another's becoming powerful ruins himself. Instead of empowering independent individuals, the prince must make them all submissive and weaker by making his subjects totally dependent on him. The prince must put himself in a position where his subject's economic status, social standing, safety, security, and interests rely solely on him and his opinions of them. Manipulative leaders who hold all the power also always make sure that they have a reputation for righteousness. But when needed, they must be capable of underhanded tactics and dirty works to secure their power. If the prince has to lie, cheat, and betray, he must do so in a subtle way so as not to look bad in front of his subjects. Machiavelli also answered the question of whether or not it is better to be loved than feared. Ideally, the prince should aspire for both, but we know in reality, we can't always get the best of both worlds. In such cases, Machiavelli advised that it is always better to be feared. Because men worry less about doing an injury to one who makes himself loved than to one who makes himself feared. Fear is strengthened by a dread of punishment, which is always effective. And if a prince wanted to be feared, he should do steps that will earn him the least hate. If he is still going to be hated for his cruel actions, it is better to be hated by weak people instead of the powerful ones. Because weak people do not have much potential to harm him. So, in internal disputes and fightings among his or her subjects, the ruler must always side with a stronger, richer, and more influential camp so as not to earn their hate. And when exercising cruelty, the prince can also use a scapegoat or a fall guy in order to remove suspicion from himself, when in fact he is actually the one behind the cruel punishments. Niccolo Machiavelli view people as fickle and a servant to their own personal interests. That is why, in times of challenges, whether it be an invasion from a foreign country, calamity, famine, or 
or an internal conflict within the principality, there will always be people who will question the prince's authority and will probably plot to overthrow and betray him. This harsh outlook in life made Machiavelli believe that leaders can't always play by the rules. They are advised to work in the shadows if needed be. Machiavelli argued that some historical figures who acted in similar fashion to the cruel advice in his treatise have secured their rule and have stabilized their domains. They needed to employ those underhanded tactics in order to achieve their goals and get their desired outcome. Machiavelli leans more on the idea that the end does justify the means. Fortune is cruel, for it can build up or destroy a person. He compared fortune to a violent river which can easily wipe the soil from one place to another. It can destroy cities through flooding and it can be very deadly during a storm. But leaders can work their hardest to tilt fortune slightly to their favor by building dikes and embankments that will control where the stream of water will rush into during a calamity. In other words, Machiavelli advised leaders leaders to prepare for the onslaught of fortune by doing whatever it takes to prepare and this may include getting their hands dirty. Again, I just want to say that I don't advise people to be manipulative and shady. What we should learn from Machiavelli's work is that there are people out there who will not hesitate to cross the line in order to achieve their objectives. They could be at school, work, or in our other social groups. We must be careful in picking leaders who we will trust and examine carefully other people's motivations and actions before we completely let our guard down and be persuaded by them. That's it for this week's video. Alright, take care guys.